All right, we got Blizzard. This is why people don't want to come back from your boy, Bellular News. Oh, baby. What do we got to say about old Overwatch? Let me see. To make this spicy, I want you to imagine that you are a game developer, right? You're working at a big company and, well, your bonuses have continually been slashed. You're worried oh. about your job maybe being axed, maybe your segment of the game getting a massive cut. You're working on a game that has lost much of its original deep fan base and is surrounded by drama. Okay. I can relate. Well, kind of not really. I don't design games and shit. I don't know. It's hard to make a comment on a job that is what I would say, like an artistic slash entertainment job, because the I don't know, like the assumption I would guess is like, oh, once you become a game developer and you get with a, like a triple A company, you know, as much as, you know, I shit on them, it's like, oh, I will get like some sort of like hourly wage or something and then maybe i will get a bonus so that you know i can put my degree in game development or whatever to to good use um that is my like initial assumption i mean maybe like the game development like pay cycle industry is like different than like i don't know normal jobs like, you know, normal job, you get paid every two weeks, every one week or whatever. Or if you're like self-employed, it's like a little bit different depending on your job or whatever. Uh, maybe like, is your bonus like half of like your yearly paycheck or is it like a quarter or a third or, or like a fifth or something? Like I am so unfamiliar with the, con I like, I, I understand the concept of a bonus, but in my life, I have never gotten a bonus with the job I have currently I understand like what time and a half is like overtime or I understand like PTO but I'm just not familiar with like a bonus so like if you're if you're like developing a game year after year and your bonus chunk which I would assume comes at the end of the year like is some amount and it gets constantly like less and less well then yeah, that's concerning. Like, 100%. I mean, there's just so many variables when it comes to, like, uh, conversations about, like, paychecks and livable wages and whatnot. It's like, well, what the fuck is your hourly weight rate or whatever? And, like, what state are you living in? That matters as well. There, there's It's such a nuanced conversation. It's hard to just say, like... I mean, he said, like, uh, what do you call it? Imagine you're a dev. But... Knee-jerk reaction? Bro, that fucking sucks. You do a whole bunch of work. You want to make the game better because you're a game developer. That's why you even did this in the first place. Yeah. But guess what? The headlines about your game are a $40 weapon with $10 up charges. So Ugh. yes, today we're going to be talking about live services specifically. Ugh. I mean, but like, is it really the game developer making the financial decisions? Or is it somebody else? I mean, when you're a game developer, like, you could have, like, an inkling on, like, like, if you're making skins in, like, the art department or the 3D, uh, the, like, animation department, the rigging, you're, you know, you're in there making the actual thing, you're doing the, the designs and whatnot, um, you could kind of get an idea, like, oh, I put so much time and effort and in, into this thing, oh, man, this is gonna be a banger, this is, like, a $500 skin, this is a $500 weapon, oh, man, this is gonna be lit, uh, I mean, I don't know, like, what the, the you know, the, the process is for making, like, skins and trying to determine, like, a price point for each skin. I would have no idea. I mean, hopefully, you know, every skin that you make, it's, like, your best, you know, effort. Specifically Overwatch 2, because what happens if your game exists to sell cosmetics, not a uh, video game? And what if the last... I mean, well... Overwatch is currently Overwatch 2 is free to play, but I understand that Overwatch 1 was a paid game. 
last time that your company tried to sell video game within your video game, it was the invasion pack. That uh, notably seems to have completely bombed that led to people not getting their bonuses. Yeah, it's uh, it's yeah. pretty damn rough. So let's dive in, of course, with the support. I mean, is that the, the the game developer's fault or is that marketing's fault or is it the guy above who's controlling all this? Is it his fault? Like, I doubt it's like the game dev's fault, dude. Like, come on. The, the game devs are just in there making content, you know. Oh, we need this skin with this theme, with these color palettes, these shades, with this animation. It's like, okay, sure. Done. You know, sometimes it takes a couple weeks, maybe a couple months, maybe even a year <laughs> uh, in some cases. But, you know, it, I doubt it's like the art department, the 3D department, the animation department, the coding, the programming. I doubt it's any of their fault that it, it it's uh, it's the, the, the with the pricing and whatnot and, and marketing. It's like, ugh. We're on the help of all of our people over at Bellular.Games. Over there, we've got ad-free videos. We've got loading screen. We're all hanging out in the Discord together. So if you And just as a little uh, an aside, I kind of, I skimmed through this video. I actually got like halfway through this video uh, at the gym. And then uh, Bellular was just talking some stuff. And I was like, there's no way I got to fucking like, like watch this and shit. Like I, I stopped it at about halfway because... He goes into like more stuff. He goes into like FPS shit as well. But I was just like, damn, this is too good. I got to save this for fucking later. So, uh, so yeah. If you want more of what we do and to support the mission, that's the place. With that said, let's talk about their attempt. So, season 11 of Overwatch has started. It's got basically a battle pass. Is it season 11 of Overwatch or season 11 of Overwatch 2? Or how long does a season go on for? Is it like, uh, like quarterly? Like every three months is a season or every four months is a season. Every three, that's quarterly. Yeah, three times 12. Or three times four is 12. Yeah, math. Um, Season 11. Huh. I didn't even know what the fuck uh, the Overwatch had seasons. As that is themed around like Power Rangers, Kaiju, that kind of thing. Which that's to be cool. honest, I should be pretty weak to. The legendary skin, by the way, is Rita Repulsa for Ash. That's actually not that bad. You know, that's standard Blizzard practice. You know, the whole thing with Blizzard is they're big on themes. Themes, you gotta have a good theme. You gotta have a good color theme, a good design theme, a theme for the theme. Uh, I think this is like a fine theme. Like I was a, a fan of Power Rangers and Godzilla and shit when I was a little kid. So I think this is fine. And Blizzard, what Blizzard does best is they take shit, add a shit little polish to it, and make it look good for, you know, the Blizzard brand of the thing. That's what Blizzard does. There's new mythic cosmetics for weapons. We'll be talking about that. A rework to weekly challenge progression. And of course, a delicious purchase opportunity that's actually good because it's basically the return of Pink Mercy. And the thing that matters there is that the proceeds go directly to cancer research. So that is a very, very, very good thing indeed. So it's called Overwatch right. TLDR Power Rangers. The big headline thing for them is 100 million players. Three months ago, they said they were on track to hit that. They now have hit that. And ostensibly, that's why. There's no way there's a hundred million like active players. It's probably like a hundred million unique players over the lifespan of Overwatch. I can believe that number or maybe not even unique. Maybe a hundred million accounts over the lifespan in, in, in Overwatch and its entirety. I would believe that number. But a hundred million players... That's like the most vaguest fucking statistic I've ever heard. Like, oh, there's 8 billion people on the planet Earth. Like, yeah, no shit. Why they're doing the whole mercy thing again. And in a case like this, before we get into the real juicy meat of it, what I actually like to do is take a look at some of the numbers because it's always good to be grounded just in a little bit of that reality. So what we do know is, at least for a period, they were making a shitload of money, and that's because mm. they were actually way up in Steam, sandwiched in between... Oh, damn, the Steam Deck on sale. Is it? Oh, shit, I might get one. Elden Ring and Shadow of the Earth Tree. Yes, they were ranked three, just behind Elden Ring and uh, the Steam Deck. That's pretty damn impressive, of course, especially because a lot of people still play Overwatch on Battle.net, right? Yeah. They, they do that whole thing in Battle.net. Their friends are in Battle.net. That mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense. It's yeah. where Overwatch launched. So 
I don't exactly know what the audience uh, split is, but what we do know yep, is I don't that a segment of the audience on Steam is buying enough stuff that this has absolutely surged all the way up. And a similar thing does happen with, say, Call of Duty whenever they do a new Black Cell Battle Pass. Man, those things sell absolutely crazy. Now, it's crazy how much, uh, like, Call of Duty is still kicking. Like, I'm amazed that Call of Duty has been... Uh, Call of Duty is like... It's like a, like a Frankenstein for me in terms of FPS. I'll, I'll get into that later, but yeah. Let's talk about numbers because uh, they're actually kind of interesting. Oh. So here's the overall... Oh, kind of getting up there, kind of getting stabilized at about f less than 50K, maybe around 40K. And it's just on Steam. Oh my God, 24 hour peak. Yeah, but oh wait, it's not really stabilized at like 40K. It's more like... Well, it's like above 25, under 50, so yeah, 40-ish. ...performance for Overwatch 2 basically since the start of this year. And we can see that their average player counts are a bit below 25k, and, uh, you know, they're, they're sort of more spiky numbers. Mm -hmm. They are resting just above 25k at the start of the year. Then, mid-February, we see a pretty good spike as a season launches, I believe season 9, yeah. and season 10 launches. Yeah, anytime a season comes out within... FPS or just shooters in general, th there's like a, a spike and then it tapers off. The goal is to have a long drawn out plateau, a long slow decline, not like a sharp spike up and a sharp spike down. That is not the goal. You want a sharp spike up like, oh, new season, new hotness, oh, new shit to buy. You want that spike up and then you want to just coast, coast it on the way down. Then you'll reach a point like, oh, new season again. Oh, yeah, new season. Oh. It's a little bit into the middle of April, and we can see that season 10 really did boost things up. And that does make sense to me. It actually had a few um, neat things going. But of course, neat things that I now would not be able to play or check out, which does mean that any of those wins represented by that lovely high player count number, that in a way they're not particularly uh, relevant because I found out about them too late. Now this season's only just launched. That does mean that we don't have a lot of data for it. Doesn't seem to be a humongous spike, but it definitely is getting a healthy enough spike. And yeah. as you compare Overwatch 2, at the very start of 2024 to where we are right now, halfway yeah. through 2024, you do actually see that they've done pretty well. They were having their player counts a bit more in the 25Ks. Now they're a little bit more. I mean, don't look at the valleys. Look at the, or don't look at the peaks. Look at the valleys. Like they're staying just above 20K. There was a spike here and then probably like over here, the average was probably like 26, seven, maybe 30 ish K. And then maybe over here, it was probably like 35 ish K. Like, look at all the valleys. Even the valleys are going up. And then another season comes out and then, oh, all of a sudden. Oh, maybe it's about 35, 40 ish K. And it's like kind of doing this weird thing. It's more or less like stabilizing at about, uh, I don't know, 40-ish K. And this is just for PC. Don't forget, Overwatch is on a uh, console. Yep. For over 40K. So that is going to be pretty healthy. There's times they're even touching or even surpassing 50K. Of course, 50K concurrence is not a humongous amount if we're talking about the top echelon of video games. But again, you've got to remember, this is only Steam, one yeah. platform, and Overwatch is mostly on. Yeah. And B net. So sir. Yeah, what what if you could guess like how many people concurrent like in the last twenty four hours would you say is on B net? What would you say? Like seventy five? Maybe a hundred K? So maybe to like together on PC total, maybe like hundred and fifty. That ain't nothing to scoff at. Overwatch is still a thing. And then you combine that with whatever the numbers are for a uh, console. Certainly plenty of players, and that does mean plenty of people to go and buy the things that will make them the money. But before we talk about money and tactics, 
actually are doing one interesting thing. I think this is really, really smart marketing. It actually harnesses some community angst. So basically, there's a creator-made balance uh, for the game, right? Uh, you know the, the idea where people would be like, oh my god, if only we could make the changes, the game would be better. And yeah. uh, essentially, they've done that as a bit of a marketing beat. It's in the form of... Oh, getting creative with the community crafted mode. Season 11 is here. And with it comes a fun new way to play designed by some of your favorite Overwatch 2 content creators. We've teamed up with Emong, TQQ, Custa, and SK to pitch us their wild and crazy ideas to try and to try in the game. Read on to find out what changes they've cooked up and how you can play and what fun new rewards you can earn starting today. Okay. Okay, what is it? Uh, you can find the community crafter mode in the arcade, which plays with the 5v5 roll lock roll set. <laughs> Again, with the 5v5 roll lock roll set. Uh, while the rules are the same, every hero has new changes to their kit. Some even have returning classic abilities uh, that haven't been seen since launch of Overwatch 2. So make sure to take a look at the hero change below. You can uh, also load the community crafted mode as a preset available in custom game to play with your friends. So essentially, they have just shoehorned in PTR and just labeled it as arcade mode. <laughs> this is the funniest shit I've ever heard. Just put PTR in the game and call it arcade. So sometimes maybe we'll revert abilities to like their old form or maybe we'll try to change them and it's just chalk it up as arcade mode. Yeah. <laughs> That's the funniest shit, dude. My God. You know what? I think this is a good idea. Like, I, I've been saying that for a while. Uh, shooters, I, they all shooters have their whatever ranked competitive ladder. The thing that most shooters lack is the fun whatever shit modes to just fuck around with. So adding more modes like that in any game is, I would say, an overall good thing an arcade mode and there are support changes by SK, there are projectile hero changes by Kusta, hit scan hero changes by TQQ and a bunch of tank changes from Among. So basically four streamers being given the opportunity to actually test out some of their theories within of course the limits of existing Overwatch. And you've got things like ability and movement changes, say Ro Are these possibly, are these four creators, are these like the paid shills of the Overwatch community? <laughs> Roadhog pulling himself towards enemies, so that's kind of crazy. Uh, nerfs, buffs to different things, and uh, completely new abilities, as an example, for Orisa. It's quite a lot, actually. So the devs have actually given this a proper fair shake. They have absolutely went and implemented mechanical changes for this mode, which of course does make sense. This is a strong marketing beat. Now, there are crazy out there things which wouldn't really work, but there are actually some changes that people love to the degree where people are basically campaigning for some of these things to be rolled into the, the proper balance for the game, which is actually really damn cool. Like, actually... Props to the creators, number one. Also props to Blizzard. Uh, yes, on the game design side, but I'd also say on the marketing side, this is a great example of marketing. And it's one that I recently saw done very well in a completely different sector, and that is with the Nothing Buds 2. Now, they do have other earbuds beyond that, but basically, mm -hmm. the nothing, I think the Nothing Ear 1, right? There was a guy on YouTube, he did a review of them, like a more technical one, and absolutely ravaged them. All right. So, Nothing reached out to him, they end up having him basically do a whole bunch of um, work and testing with their new product. And then, of course, they do a little marketing video. Well, they, they do a video together and it ends up being that the next product was better, that this you know creator was involved in a whole bunch of tuning and stuff. Oh, dang. Headphones. And actually, some of his work ended up in the shipped product. Now, that's a really, really good example of nothing. Yeah. Number one, yes, wanting to make their product better, but also getting really good like marketing. And it's not really just marketing, it's also a story, a story with people. And in this case, it'll be a story with a bunch of streamers that many players will know. So I always hesitate when the top 1% of like any competitive video game gets to add direct feedback to a developer on how the game should be played. Because the top, TP top 1%, is always going to advocate for changes that favor them and not the 99% of the player base. And that's understandable. Why would you try to make changes to make the game less enjoyable for yourself? That doesn't make sense to me. 
um you know there was like a, a time when halo the halo devs tried to get a bunch of input from like halo professionals and then surprise surprise the game was uh became like really hard and like i don't know i guess it was like really un unenjoyable for the most part so i don't know like i think it's good that this is happening but just temper your expectations that's a really, really smart way to market your game. And let's be real, that kind of warm community feeling is what some people have uh, have felt they've somewhat lost in the new world of Overwatch basically being a game that is nickel and diming you to buy cosmetics, which is in some ways different. Also, no one is forcing anybody to buy cosmetics. So the whole nickel and diming thing, I do not buy that. If you don't want to buy skins, don't buy skins. It's as simple as that. No one's forcing you to buy any of this to what the older game had been. Now, there are one or two other good features before I get into uh, us having a good old laugh about, uh, about the money side of things. So, weekly challenge catch-up. Listen to this. All past incomplete weekly challenges can be completed at any time in a given season. When the weekly reset occurs on Tuesdays, incomplete weekly challenges gain an additional copy of that challenge. When a weekly challenge is completed, if ah. that challenge has copies remaining, the challenge will refresh and be completed again. Which, uh, honestly, good. that's pretty good. That is actually actually slicing away yeah it, it speeds up quotes speeds up progression with the challenge system the daily weekly monthly challenge whatever it is <laughs> that's fine way a little bit of fomo right it's basically stacking up potentially earnable rewards rather than saying you can get a big chunk of reward every week but if you're not there in a given week you won't be able to get it so i yeah blizzard implemented this change in Cata Classic WoW with, uh, what is it, like, Valor points? Finally? It's like, you should have did that at the fucking beginning. Boneheads. I do think that that is smart. Obviously, from Blizzard's perspective, they probably think that this will have positive impacts on, um, you know, on player behavior. They've also talked about weekly milestones, which are challenges progressed by doing other weekly challenges. Each week, a new one will unlock, and all past ones can be completed again at any time within a given season. Those are definitely very positive changes, and across so many different games, of course, very notably. This is the same thing as Blizzard cutting off your arm and giving you back like one or two fingers at a time. And then you're all hyped that you got like a couple fingers back. With Halo Infinite uh, around its launch, having iffy weekly challenge design when that is a fairly core part of say your battle pass progression, that can do serious damage to a game. Again, because what they're marketing at people and what they are overtly telling people they should go and progress is a big extrinsic reward thing. So, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, you cock that up and you end up in a pretty rough situation. But speak the thing, uh, this just circles back to what I said before. Every shooter has their like regular ranked mode, their like pub mode, but seldom do they ever have their a bunch of silly modes with like a progression system within that mode. You know, look at old, uh, what was it? Was it Halo 2 or 3? I forgot which one, but essentially there wasn't just ranked mode in old, in old Halo. There was ranked mode in all of the silly little playlists. There was ranked do domination, team ter or ranked territories, ranked skull, carry the skull thing, ranked capture the flag. There was like a bunch of different ranked modes. The pro one of the problems with FPS today is there is only one ranked mode. You know, BRs. It's ranked uh, in Apex. It's ranked threes. Why aren't there ranked fucking twos yet? Okay. Uh, in in I don't know how it is in Fortnite. I assume it's the same thing. There's ranked quads, ranked trios, and ranked duos. Like, why aren't there any other modes to to try to uh? coerce players into trying like some silly things uh what else uh counter-strike the ranked mode is 5v5 same thing with valorant 5v5 uh what else in any other with uh, quake is more or less the same thing uh, like the main thing with quake is like 1v1s is like the esport uh and then may i think there's like duos like 2v2 
ranked, but that's not as popular. But like, what else? What other uh, ranked modes are there in Quake? It, like, it. I want more rank modes of all the silly game modes that you have in your game. Just do it. Speaking of rough, wow. Well, um, this is what they're doing. Okay, there's a $40 weapon skin with $10 upgrades. Specifically, what it is, is a new mythic weapon for Reinhardt. And this like, not gonna lie, it looks cool. It do look cool. But when I see, with my modern brain, when I see this, like, cool-ass thing, I'm like, how much is it? Immediately, I'm thinking like triple digits. That's a hundred dollars. This is a weapon that, like with the heroic weapon, I'm just guessing, can be equipped regardless of what skin your character is using. Now, basically, the way that things work with the mythic prisms is there's a mythic skin in Overwatch, right? And right. to buy the entire mythic skin costs eighty prisms, and every premium battle pass gives you how much is a fucking prism? Eighty prisms, uh, if you of course complete it. So basically. Okay, so how much is a battle pass then? The way it works is there's a mythic skin. I'd imagine it's like, what, 20 bucks or something? Skin added every single season, and the premium battle pass in total gives you enough prisms to buy a completely maxed out version of that mythic skin, though you can buy more basic versions of the skin for less prisms. What they've essentially done is- Oh, so there's like a mythic version of the skin and a basic version of the skin? <laughs> oh my god, that's- I can't imagine like- a worse way to divide your player base into like hardcore and brokey <laughs> oh my god here's uh here's the poverty version of our 500 hundred dollar skin guys <laughs> throw your bone <laughs> is they've taken a little bit of the fomo out of it but there still is a, there still is some fomo and jesus they've done that via like who would actually rock the poverty version of the skin currency because previously you needed to complete the battle pass to get the mythic skin of course with this new way of doing things it is more friendly to players right if you only want the basic version of a mythic skin well you can get that and mm -hmm. then put your spare prisms towards something else but of course when you see a dev do that when you see a new currency especially one that could be premium you've got i have no idea how much a fucking prism is like how many real dollar dues is a prism if it's 80 prisms for a mythic skin, is a single prism like a dollar or something? Got to think, ah, how will they do this? And well, they've they've done it in this way, right? They're going to be adding in this mythic for Reinhardt, and it's it's a pretty involved one, right? They say that it's going to have a bunch of exclusive sound and visual effects, and they say it's coming in our mid-season update, we'll be introducing a new type of mythic cosmetic. Uh, the mythic weapon skins, like our heroic weapon skins, you'll be able to equip a mythic weapon skin with any hero skin for the matching hero, in parentheses, and will come with exclusive sound and visual effects. Exclusive sound and visual effects. Oh, you gotta pay for your visuals and sound. Oh my god, that's amazing. I can't imagine there being any audio issues with this, or any additional visual clutter with this. Fucking FPS bros love all the sound. They want more sound in their FPS. They want more visual clutter in their game. That's what they want. Uh, another way to spend your mythic prisms, uh, you can unlock the base skin at 50 mythic prisms and then unlock additional levels at 10 mythic prisms. I don't even know what I just fucking read. You can unlock the base skin with 50 prisms and unlock an additional Unlock additional levels at 10 Mythic Prisms? What does that even mean? Including a weapon, flourish emote, Ooh. Uh, elimination visual effects, Ooh. and reactive effects. Amazing. It's another way to spend your prisms, and you can unlock the base skin for 50 prisms, which is the equivalent of 40 US dollars on their in game store. And then you can <laughs> unlock additional levels at 10 mythic prisms, including a weapon flourish emote, elimination visual effects, and reactive effects. Now, we hey, if you got the money and you don't give a shit, hey, and you like the game, spend your money however you want to. Don't let me fucking dictate what you shouldn't do and don't, don't do with your money.
I don't know what the full final price will be, but it could be 80 prisms. And you know what that means, everybody? Well, uh, yeah, I, I mean, of course you know what it means. Of course you do, because the battle pass, the, the way that this was sold to players, right? Is oh. the battle pass will give you enough prisms that you can just go and get the whole, uh, you know, get the mythic skin that you the want. The whole kit and caboodle. The entire, like, reason, the framing behind this was a player-friendly one to give you a way to earn prior mythic skins. Say, if you don't like the current season's mythic skin, that's fine. You can buy the premium battle pass anyway and spend the prisms on another skin that you do like. Of course, what happens with this is that now there is more mythic skin content between the weapon and the hero skin in a season than you get in the premium battle pass and okay okay that then means that this as a, as a currency as an economy is is more important so oh yeah i mean basically there you go it's important if you value cosmetics in your fps game that is the degree to which it is important if you do not value skins in the game then this isn't important. Oh, this is a way for them to sell a decently substantial... Well, they make a lot of money. I mean... And again, I'm just going to reiterate. If you like the game and you want to support the game, do whatever. Look how expensive this is going to be. I mean, look, let's say you're a completionist style of player. So you get the premium battle pass, right? You get that. You get your AD prisms. You use those to max out the current uh, mythic skin, say. Bro, if I'm a completionist player, Overwatch, or a shooter in which you get skins by paying money, is not the way I'm going to be a completionist. Like, what? If I'm a completionist, I'm playing a whole other different ass game. Why would I be a completionist in a game where I have to pay real money for skins? What, so I can like try to get like every skin in the game? Oh my god. But then you also want the weapon. Well, if the weapon costs 50 base, that's 40 USD. If though, fully upgrading the weapon takes it to a total cost of 80 mythic prisms. Guess how much money you have to spend. You... Oh, it's about right there. Or here, let's try to chunk it. There's 50 right there at 40 bucks. At 50. Plus. Ooh. Plus another 25. Ooh. Okay, so 40 plus 25. Uh, was that 65 ish? Uh, yeah. So you can buy these two for 65, or you can get 75 plus another. You can get 100 for $75. Dang. I would imagine. So what is this? Uh, da, 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 65. So you can pay either 65 for just the 80 prisms. Or you can pay an extra 15 and get an extra 25. All right. So you get a big deal here. And what's the value of this like extra 25? Well, just look right here. Uh, you can pay... A prism is essentially a dollar. Okay. That's what I'm getting from this. That's what I guessed. And I didn't even see this shit, dude. <laughs> How much is a prism? Like a dollar? <laughs> it's about that. <laughs> oh, you got to get him with that anchoring, man. Got to get him with that anchoring. Look at the loot boxes, man. With all the little thingies. It, just everywhere. I'm, ble I'm bleeding. I'm swimming in thingies and purple triangles. Give me those purple triangles. Either buy 50 prisms and then buy 30 prisms, which would cost you 40. Isn't a prism like a pyramid? This is just like a triangle. <laughs> bucks plus 25 bucks, a total of 65 bucks. <laughs> now there is a package of prisms. Ooh. 75 prisms uh -huh. plus 25 bonus for 74.99 which of course is a better deal oh but i want the deals for prism way but i'm poor and i need deals i need to save money and i need the most value for my dollar
What can you offer me to offer the most stuff for my dollar? Uh, it is quite funny that to fully max the weapon, you would need 80 prisms, yet the denominations they sell are 10, 30, 50, and 100. That gap Ooh. between 50 and 100 is hilarious. Basically, they want people to spend like 75 bucks. Yep, Which yep. It's absolutely quite rough. Now, you may be thinking about other things, like isn't there another premium currency in the game? The answer, of course, yes. It's the it's the Overwatch coins, right? So oh, there's another currency. Oh my God, how many currencies are in this fucking game? Let's just dive into a little bit of how the business model is currently being run. So the premium. Oh, look at this. <laughs> it's a, and a, a, what is this? An octagon, a pentagon or something gone, a hexagon with some uh, little lines. Overwatch coin, OWC. What is this? <laughs> how much is like 200 Overwatch or 2000 Overwatch coin? Is this like, this? Is, what is this? Like 20 bucks right here? 20 bucks you get this like one two three four five skins or oh no i'm wrong g p g b p what is g b p global battle pass points global battle point battle net point for 35 or what is all these numbers dude what is this this like orange shield thing for plus 20 because it's a bundle you get more orange shields what are all these fucking currencies, man? In battle pass costs a thousand coins or twenty two hundred coins with twenty tier skips included. Now, of course, if oh, you are a discerning skips. gamer, which I know. Oh, it's a tier skip. Oh, OK. I mean, if you want to skip to just. You got to pay to get the thing and then pay again to skip the thing. Hell yeah you are you're gonna make the smart choice you're gonna buy the 40 dollar pack because it's got the premium battle pass it's got the 20 tier skips it's got a 20 percent yeah. xp bonus it comes with 2000 overwatch coins that's um oh let's just say 20 dollars in value so there you go basically basically it's free because it's such a good value they highlight that the pass of course that you get in this bundle lets you unlock a total of 80 prisms and uh, 600 additional coins but then but then mm. we have the kaiju roadhog and kaiju zenyan Guess what they are? Those uh, are legendary skins. They are uh, legendary skins that you cannot get in any other way. Oh, uh, right? You cannot buy them with Overwatch coins or uh, you know, no. They're they're unique to this bundle. Uh, you got to buy the bundle. You can only get the bundle. So you might as well. It's a limited time offer. Uh it's FOMO. You got to get the bundle or else you're not going to be able to get them again. They work. So uh yeah, if you want to be a completionist, actually you need to buy the $40 pack, and then you will need to buy a whole bunch more prisms. Again, I say completion. The only reason why I recognize all of this is because I had a similar experience in Apex Legends. I have like 3,000, about 3,000 hours in Apex. And throughout my entirety of playing, I am embarrassed to say that I have probably spent about, oh shit, I don't even know. I don't even know. Like, it's in the thousands. It's in the thousands. Oh, uh, fuck. Like, maybe two, somewhere between two and three thousand dollars in Apex. And I 100% regret every dollar of it. I wish I could get it back. I really do. So that's why I recognize all this, man. I recognize this miles away. And it, it, this isn't like anything new. But, I mean, shit. I'm not fucking, like, made of money. I'm just a regular fucking dude. And some people may argue that this isn't a completionism thing. Well, certainly I would think about the gameplay patterns of... I'm just a regular stupid guy. Overwatch players during the Overwatch 1 era were very much one thing they enjoyed doing was collecting skins. Well, now the thing is, it's not about collecting anymore. No. It's about buying. It's about of course buying everything and maintaining your collection. The people, it was a lot more exciting when they could complete some games and uh, they could earn a loot box and maybe they get a skin that they want from that loot box or maybe. They and here's the thing. If this is what the general player base wants, then everything I just said is fucking null and void.
If this is what the general player base wants, fantastic. But if this is not the consensus of like almost everybody, well then there's an issue. They get event loot boxes because they're playing an event and they're unlocking those and they are collecting those skins. Now, yes, there was a way that people could go and spend money in the loot boxes and obviously that, uh, you know, loot boxes suck. Yes. But here I do actually think it's just more smartly put together to get money out of people again because of the way that, yes, there are premium currencies, but they are actually quite siloed and divided, especially yeah. with there being some skins that are only available via upfront real world money purchases. That, of course, will mean that loads of players have loads of like all the, the different currencies and all of these like live service games. I think it's I think it's honestly it's so bad because it separates your mind from the dollar value like the value of a dollar that you have in your hand is different than the the value of xyz coin in your favorite fps game the more the developer can separate your concept of value from a dollar through all of their little coins the more likely you are to spend your actual money in the game that's the goal to sep well besides separate you from your money they they do more things like anchoring you know having a a set made up value price for like a single coin currency or whatever it, it's crazy man it's crazy to spare overwatch coins you cannot turn overwatch coins into prisms what you'll do with your overwatch coins of course is to either purchase the next season's pass or of course to purchase things from the rotating store and the thing is if you're a completionist you don't want to spend your overwatch coins on the premium battle pass because when the next premium battle pass comes there will be a 40 dollar bundle that will probably have truly unique exclusive things and a lot yeah. of people will say okay yeah but the how could they exp do they really think people will play the game like that? Well, yeah. um, it's what they Yeah. Yes, they will. Because if they didn't think gamers would do it, they wouldn't do it. A hundred percent, dude. Yep. That's your community. They want them to do because that's how they've designed their business model. Uh, then, of course, there's also a $10 starter pack. And this is all amid them. Oh, what's the $10 starter pack? Is it like 800% value? Actually getting quite a lot of criticism. So just scanning around the community, a lot of people talking about legendary recolors. Now, this has been going on for ages, but this is a really easy example for Soldier 76 where they're... What is this? Is this like $19 for the skin? There's a new skin for him. Guess what? It's a straight recolor of another legendary skin. Jesus Christ, man. Ugh. Like, god damn, dude. Like, just a recolor? Making players pay for recolors. That is... So, it, it, this is like an example of the blind leading the blind. Making recolors legendary skins and thinking gamers will pay for it, and then gamers actually paying for it. This is just the blind leading the blind. If you got like, if you like this monetization model, fine, be my guest. But if you don't like it, stop buying skins. It's simple. Change your fucking skin to default Andy. Be a default skin Andy. It's then also being sold in a bundle with a Hanzo Legendary skin. A Hanzo Legendary skin that is, of course, a recolor. A re oh my god. Well, let me see. Go back a little bit. Okay, he got the gray. He got the triangle. He got the, the little red strap. Another little red strap down there. He got the jacket, the gloves, a little turtleneck. Is, of course, a recolor. A recolor. He got the blue strap, the blue strap, the jacket, uh, the turtleneck. Uh, yeah, that's a recolor. 10-4. A recolor of another Hanzo. And the laziest fucking name. Like, look at the name. It's fucking casual. <laughs> this is your legendary skin. Casual. Legendary skin. Now... To be honest with you, I think if you get one legendary skin and they're going to be doing the recolor thing, they should be giving people a pretty substantial discount on the other, uh, you know, recolors. No, because that wouldn't make them as, as much money, Bellular. That wouldn't make them as much money.
I'm just thinking about how the value. They got to charge your ass $20 for mother fucking blue. You is, is assigned in a legendary skin. And yes, some of that's the color, but mostly, mostly it's the new geometry. It's all of the more high effort, expensive things. So I think that to do a palette swap and uh, to just have that be the same price, I don't know. No. I, I think there should be some sort of thing where you buy a legendary skin and you get a discount on its recolors, but. Uh... The Blizzard would never do that. that. I don't think any FPS has ever done that. They sell you a legendary skin and because you have the legendary skin, you, you get, you can buy the other legendary skins at a discount. That would make too much sense. Or God forbid, sell you a legendary skin and then give you a bunch of little option slots to say, oh, I want this little option slot to be red. I want this option slot to be blue. And then you can select whatever color you want. And then maybe sell you like, uh, like patterns, sell you like the gold pattern, sell you the, 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 the diamond one, the slime one, the purple misty one or, or something. Ugh. That maybe that would be, uh, just being too nice to your customers. Yeah. Why do that when maybe you can, uh, you know, you can get more out of the pay pigs some other way. The other yeah. side of things. Damn. <laughs> Bellular <laughs> fire and shots calling the fucking overwatch crowd pay pigs <laughs> i didn't even say that <laughs> damn dude he just straight does not give a flying fuck <laughs> oh man i at least gave the caveat of if you like the game and, and support it fucking go ahead but he's just saying nah the pay pigs <laughs> <laughs> then is the ah. battle pass um again in this example at the end of the battle pass you do get i think a genji skin that is a recolor of another legendary genji skin and big picture the theme of overwatch players being less and less uh, satisfied with the battle passes they're getting like what the fuck go back like this is obviously like supposed to be a play on the the, the green ranger from power rangers the Green Ranger from Power Rangers had like a gold shoulder girdle thing. Why isn't this fucking gold? What? Because what would have been too much of a fucking trademark issue? Like, all, we can't make it gold because that's too similar. Get the fuck out of here, dude. And big picture, the theme of Overwatch players being less and less uh, satisfied with the battle passes they're getting, that is something that, of course, is continuing. What's also continuing, of course, is uh, is events and promotions. As an example, they have, um, you know, they have the summer uh, event, and along with that, they're good. on guard skin. So you can good. This is good. More modes. More modes like this can get lifeguard kiriko which i think they know they'll uh, i don't know maybe earn their bonuses back on and also the transformers collaboration i mean i suppose that makes sense because yes it's just brands everywhere brands everywhere forever that is the world that we live in brands and on brands even, as an example take a sister game of overwatch call of duty modern warfare 3 yeah i look at that and it makes my eyes want to scream which of course is very inconvenient because my eyes don't have mouths call of duty <laughs> Oh my god, this is the funniest shit. Like, I haven't been paying attention to anything Warzone. I think Warzone is a radioactive pile of trash. I don't go near it. I don't talk about it at all. I let the Warzone bros do the Warzone thing. I know there are some, like, decent M&K players that do still play Warzone. But, hey, if I'm not talking about it, there's a reason. He doesn't look like Call of Duty anymore. It doesn't. You have you have Space Marines and Homelander and Lilith and Anarius and Brand. Hey, who cares about the the brand of Call of Duty when you have all of this uh, shit in there? If the general player base didn't want it, they wouldn't buy it. But that's not the case. And that's why you see everybody running around as Nicki Minaj, Homelander, Snoop Dogg, Kevin Durant, so on and so forth. If the general player base didn't want it, they wouldn't buy it. But since that's not the case, they buy it because they want it.
No one's forcing them to buy any of this. People flipping knockoff Mulder and Scully. It doesn't look like Hollywood. What the heck is Mulder and Scully? Of Judy anymore. You know what, actually? I wanted to play a modern military shooter. That's what I do if I want to boot up Call of Duty. Well, uh, here is where I would disagree. If you want to play a modern military shooter, you play, you go play a different game. 100%. Call of Duty is not the modern military shooter. 100% no. Maybe it used to be in the past with some like other titles. But you need to go to a different IP if that's what you want. Call of Duty is not it. Call of Duty is an arcade shooter. In which I think I'll give Call of Duty some props because I have never seen an FPS game break down every aspect and uh, gunplay like aspect variable in a way that Call of Duty has. Think about it. Throughout all of the time that, you know, modern Call of Duty has been around, you know, starting from like what, 2019 and like onward. Every little solitary thing has been taken apart from the OG Call of Duties. Look at, go back and look at the OG Call of Duties and how simplistic the, 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 cust the gun customization was, the movement system, shooting, aim down sight, crouch, prone, sprint, walk. It's pretty simple. Now look at modern day Call of Duty and every single solitary aspect of Call of Duty has been deteriorated into a hundred million different attachments. Increased sprint, increased tactical sprint, increased strafe speed. Uh, what else? Increase breath hold, uh, reduce muzzle flash, reduce uh, grenade fucking uh, stun time or whatever. Uh, what else? You get li literally everything. Re reduced reload time. Uh, reduced uh, aim down sight time. Every little aspect that FPS has has been taken apart to give you a, a, a fractured experience so that they can give it all back to you when you pick a weapon, level it up all the way, and then you can start playing what you used to be able to play in the old Call of Duties. They take everything away from you only to give it to you back. Only to give it back to you. In the form of like all these attachments and perks and whatnot. And I mean, all I can say is like, if the, and I will again, say this, if the general player base didn't want it, they wouldn't stand for it. But since that's not the case, they put up with it. And that's what they like. They like having everything taken away from them only to be given it back. Judy, to me, it actually part ruins the experience that I have to go and see all of this garish brand promotion tripe within a game. It makes the actual game experience worse, and it makes it so damn clear that the game exists to be a cosmetic selling platform. I mean, honestly, nobody is forcing you to play this. If you want a different experience, go play a different game. Oh, man, I mean, basically, right? Th this is this is like a weird digital fast fashion, I suppose, um, with uh, with a less exploitative supply chain. No, this is not fast fashion, and I understand where you're going with this. But Fortnite did it first. Fortnite did it better. Call of Duty is just copying and trying to latch onto the trend. All right. Fortnite has been around for a while now, for many years. They started the trend first of getting all the brands in, into like their game. Call of Duty just wanted it to do it as well. Which is a plus, but still, it's very tiresome. And it brings me to my main worry, transience and meaning. Here's the thing. Why would I bother with any of this when I can't experience a large percentage of the developer's effort unless I play just about all of the time. Now, I know that some things need to be time limited because you don't want to click the play button. And let me let me rehear that question. 
Yes, but still, it's very tiresome. And it brings me to my main worry, transience and meaning. Here's the thing. Why would I bother with any of this? when I can't experience a large percentage of the developer's effort unless I play just about all of the time. Why would you bother playing this if you have to be playing all the time? I don't think you have to. No one's forcing you to play. I have been a huge Call of Duty fan in the past for many years. But... There was a time where I was just fed up and I was done and I was bored. And so with that, you know, I have to come to the grips. I have to come to grips. I have to come to the realization. I have to come to reality, snap back to reality and realize that the game is changing and that you are no longer the target audience. That's it's as easy as that. This game is not the game you're looking for. You're looking for some older experience, dude. This is not that experience. It, you can get kind of this experience with different games. Now, I know that some things need to be time limited because you don't want to click the play button in your game and have 8,000 icons for all the different modes appear. Like, I get it, that's a problem. But I don't know, man. It just feels like uh, the infinite churn. How does this- It feels like infinite churn because you're not the target audience. And because you're not the target audience, you don't want to participate in the infinite churn. Have value. And I suppose we're seeing them try to earn more money slicing up their different uh, premium currencies by having unique skins that can only be purchased in a bundle that does have premium currency, but, you know, can only be purchased with USD. That's the way that they're earning more money, doing these brand promotions and, and things like that. And all the while that that happens, organizational will, effort, attention, focus, it's going into that. Mm -hmm. Like, what gets measured gets managed. Yep. And look at what they're tweeting about. Look at what they're talking. It's always goddamn skins. Not really core Overwatch itself. And also, it used to be. No. I mean, there's gameplay updates. There's tweaks. There's buffs. There's nerfs. This shit happens. I don't think that's uh, the thing. It's just, uh, I think it's a percentage. Like, a larger percentage uh, that, you know, these developers are tweeting about are probably cosmetic based. And then a smaller, uh, like, minority percentage is being, like, gameplay-based. Like, buffs and nerfs and all this other shit. So it's not like it's not there. It's just, it's just not as much. To be that the skins could sort of expand the Overwatch universe. You know, there'd be a new skin for Soldier 76, and then people could say, well, what does this skin reveal about the past of that character, where he came from, what story was? But I mean, that's a cool idea. But then that would hinder the creative process in that every new skin has to link up with some aspect of his past or whatever. Sometimes I just want a, a blinged out, fucking dripped out, magna gold giga led driven skin that has like 15 different animations whenever i get a kill all right he doesn't have to have a past where he had like a gold set of armor that fucking transforms him into a goddamn cyber truck okay now the skins are just either brand tripe or random theme of the battle pass tripe because guess what we just need to keep on flicking shit at the wall so yeah. to me feels like they're not building their brand they're just trying to flip and squeeze money out of it yeah. and you know there's times recently i've hung out with people who were one thousand percent overwatch lived overwatch they bled overwatch uh -huh. for years and i don't mean just as like competitive players no, I mean people who love the skins, who read every webcomic, who got properly excited for new cinematics to drop. They gave a shit about the world, right? right? Talking to those people nowadays, they're like... And this actually is like, it kind of doubly hurts me. Well, not hurts me, but I'm like kind of sad, disappointed. One of the, within the Aim Train community, one of their favorite games just is Overwatch because it's like, 
the tracking game. You know, I mean, and you know, they can play whatever game they want, but <laughs> it's just—I don't know. I, I think it's—I think it's not a good look. Like, oh, you know, I try to separate myself from a. Uh, all the the blizzard passed and I just try to focus on gameplay and you know that's fine <sighs> but I don't know I just me personally I would hope that the aim train community would latch on to a different FPS if I could choose I don't which I don't know but eh what are you gonna do like oh that Nah, it went wrong. It's dead to me. I don't care. Look at it. And yeah, while you do have people who are playing Overwatch, and while I still think that Overwatch 2 is actually a really fun game to play, I feel like there is something more broad that is being lost. I mean, I look at this and it, it just, to me, appears like stuff. It resembles things made using artistic skill sets, but it less and less resembles art. Of course, the new map, the new push map. Oh, that's great. That's art. That's game design. Awesome. Mm -hmm. But more and more, it's about what makes the money come in. And this yeah. is a business model that I think is absolutely not in the best interest of games being good. You look at all of the work that goes into Call of Duty, basically having a new themed bundle every 10 seconds. That is work, that is budget, that is not going into more game. That in the past probably yeah. would have went into more game or just another game. But no, it's known safe brands only, monolithic live services until the end of time. Well, Okay, so essentially... He's saying too much development time is going into cosmetics and not enough into zany kooky extra modes that could be fun with you and your friends. If you ever want to take a break from doing rank mode and getting shitted on from the matchmaking experience slash SBMM slash EOMM or whatever your game has. This pop, I don't know. And as much as if it did, it would really suck for people's jobs and things. Um, by the end of the day, I struggle to see the sustainability of this. It seems like an amazing way for everyone to burn a hell of a lot of money and to use dark patterns and FOMO to just gobble up people's attention and yeah. ultimately to make people's experience of video games as a medium small, single brand, rather than something I think a lot more broad and healthy. Anyway, those are just my thoughts. Let me know what yours are. I'll see you again soon. Noise. Ah. Good video, man. I mean, Overwatch is going to do Overwatch. I don't think it's going to change anytime soon. Ugh. I mean, who knows what's going to happen to the future of it. You know, the Overwatch League is, what was it, bought out by, like, some Saudi Arabian uh, thing or something. I just know it's it's over there in that part of the world where uh, it's not... The, the values aren't as uh, progressive as uh, American values are. So, uh, yeah, that's a thing. So, we'll, we'll just have to sit and wait and see. So, uh, yeah. Other than that, good video. And I like when Bellular does, like, the FPS videos. That's just me. But, uh, but yeah, I'll catch you guys on the next one, all right? Later.